Today we're going to be talking about whole register bit manipulation on the AVR or Atmega style of microprocessors. The slides for, for this come from the textbook that can be found at nicetoland.com. There's information as well from the instruction set manual and you can take a look at the GCC documentation that's been incorporated into the XC8 compiler for microchip. Okay, so let's talk about whole register or byte level manipulation for I.O. We'll do that through an example right here. We're going to write a program that makes all of the bits for uh, port B equal to 1, so logic high. And, uh, and so we're basically going to, be, going to output uh, a bunch of logic highs, eight of them, from port B. So that means that we have to set the data direction register for port B uh, to all ones. So DDRB is equal to 1 all the way through, eight times. And then the port B register, which is the output values for those outputs, are all set to one as well, so eight of those. Now to do this, we load immediately into register 20. It could be any of the other registers that we want, but we're going to use register 20 here. We set them all to um, ones. Then from there, what we do is we uh, take that value and we move it, or we copy it basically, into the port B register. We're going to do that. But we're going to use a macro because we're programming using something like MPLAB X or Atmel Studio. Um, we need to use this macro SFR IO address that will ensure that we're going to the right address for port B because there's actually two addresses. Uh, in this case, it'll be address uh, 5 or 25. And it depends on whether or not we're accessing it from the perspective of the IO memory or the general purpose memory. Regardless, in this case, this is what we have to do. We have to use this macro, um, and we do that out to port B and out to DDRB, and we basically do it like that. Now, a simpler way of doing it, but this is a little bit more limited in terms of the flexibility that you have associated with um, this sort of work. You can do the load immediate the same way, and then you can use STS, which is like out, but it's for the general purpose memory, and we can use without that macro the port B alias for the address. Okay, so uh, this would be the way that you would normally see it in regular assembler without using um, sort of the higher level tools that are available with the um, the IDE. But you should probably get used to doing the first way that we do it here. Now the other thing to point out is that when we use uh, these the pins this way, um, we're alternating between what we can do with DDR and with port. And so when the DDR register is set to 1, then the port register 0 and 1 make an either a low value or a high value on the output pin. On the other hand, when we've got the DDR set to 0, that means uh, for the AVRs, you've got an input pin configuration. If your port pin is set to 0, then you have uh, the normal kind of operation, which is a high impedance input, which is typically what you want. Um, in some circumstances, you may want to engage the internal pull-up resistor of that particular pin, in which case you have to set the port uh, bit to be 1. But most of the time, for most usages for students, you'll want to set that to simply the high impedance mode. Okay, let's take a look at another example now. The following code will toggle all 8 bits of port B forever with some time delay between the on and off states. Now what's important to point out here is that on the call lines, the delay that we're calling, the delay function that we're calling, isn't actually defined here. We're assuming it's defined elsewhere and actually causes the delay that we want in a reliable way. Okay, so the first thing that we do here is we're going to load FF in hexadecimal, so all 8 ones, into some general register, in this case register 16. And then from there, we use the out command to DDRB using that SFR IO address macro um, to make sure that we take the contents of R16 and modify all the bits in DDRB, okay, so that we have them all set to be output. From there, we got the beginning of a, a loop, basically. That's what the L1 label is for. And we're going to set alternating. Uh, 0101010101 into register R16. That's what the uh, hexadecimal 55 does. We load that into R16. And then from there, we take that R16 value and we copy it into port B so that we have some of the 
pins on port B set to high and some of the pins set to low. So um, let's see, this would be pin uh, or bit zero, which would be the pin zero of that port, would be set high and then bit one or port uh, pin one would be set low. And then so all of the evens are gonna be high and all the odds are gonna be low. Then we call the delay for whatever amount of time that is. Then when we come back from the delay, we're going to load immediately into R16 the value that is the opposite of what we had in there before. So instead of 01010101, we're going to put 101010110 into it. That's what the double A means. Then from there, we take that value, we copy it into port B using the SFR IO address macro uh, through the out command. And then we call delay again. At this stage, all of the pins have now changed. Uh, they've alternated. So the, the ones that were off are now on and the ones that were on are now off. And then we call that delay, as, as I said, and then we jump back to that label so that we load the opposite set of values and so on and so forth. All right, let's take a look at another example. So a classic example of uh, work that we, do, we would do with um, lights on uh, a microcontroller would be to hook up a seven segment display. This is a very common commercial application. And so in this case, we have a seven segment display. It actually has eight segments. The dot that you can barely see in the, the bottom right corner is actually a segment as well. Um, but they're connected up using eight wires. That's what that one line with a slash through it means. Eight wires to port D. And each one of these wires is connected to one of the individual lights or LEDs inside of this seven or eight segment display. Now we want to make the number one show up on it. That means that segments one and two need to be lit up. So if we wire this up correctly, and, and this is really dependent on how you've wired up your seven segment display. In this case, we're assuming that uh, the bits one and two in the port D register have been connected to segments one and two on the seven segment display. And so we would write the program as follows. We would say load immediate, the value six in hexadecimal into a general register, in this case R20. And then we're going to output a copy of that value, zero, X06, zero into port D, again using that little macro. Then we're going to do a load immediate, um, let's see, that was, uh, that was the value of port D, so that's the value of the outputs. Now we're gonna make sure that the outputs are actually outputs. So now we're going to put all of the the, um, the bits on uh, port D using the DDR register. Uh, we're going to set them all to output as well. And then we basically jump to somewhere else that we need to go. Actually, in this case, we're jumping back to the same line to we're locking into position. All right. Now, instead of um, a, va a value of one on that seven segment, let's try a value of three and just see what the difference is. All we're doing here is changing the value of the port D register. Okay, DDR D doesn't change. We're just changing the sequence or the, the uh, pattern on the port D register. Okay, to light up, let's see, in this case it would be bits 0, 1, 2, 3, and 6 on the seven segment display, assuming that each of those is directly connected to one of the bits uh, that correspondingly in port D. And so the, the difference would be basically this. Everything else except for the load, the first load immediate um, stays the same. The load immediate that we have at the very top here, instead of being zero, uh, x06, zero is now 0x4f uh, to get the pattern that we're looking for. So here's the fifth example. And what we're going to do is we're going to take input values, eight of them, on port C, and we're going to transfer them in a slightly modified form into port B. And this represents um, examples where we would have, say, switches on port C and then transfer the values immediately into the lights connected to port B. So what we do first is we set the data direction register for port C to be completely uh, input using uh, zeros transferred into register R16 and then making a copy of that and placing it in DDR C. That's the first two lines. The second set of two lines, so lines three and four, we are putting a bunch of ones into that temporary register and then making a copy of that and placing it into data direction register port B. 
Then we have a loop, and you can see the loop with label L2 that starts with L2 and uh, ends with the R jump L2 at the bottom. And so what we're doing here is we're doing an input for um, pin C, and we're transferring the contents of port C input. We're placing that into register R16. From there, the next two lines are basically a, a modification of the contents of R16. We could do it in a number of different ways. Arbitrarily, we're just adding five to it. Um, and then we take that value, that resulting value in register R16, and we're transferring it with that out um, into port B. Then we jump back to the label on L2, and we once again take a look at the contents of the input uh, register for port C, that's pin C, and then we do the process of transferring that modified content again to port B over and over and over again. Mm -hmm.